Hi guys, it's Michelle from Little Mama's House and I'm here today to do a quick unboxing of two items that I just got in. Both are pre-loved. One is a bag and one is an SLG and I wanted to show you before I got down to using these because these I've been waiting for these and they're going to go into use right away. Both the bag and SLG. So let's get down to it. I wanted to show you and I do apologize. I took these both out of the shipping boxes right away because I wanted to film this yesterday but Anthony had his physical and he had his flu shot and he gets really nervous. He was uh, crying and sort of carrying on and it just wouldn't have been a good day to film. So um, I, I did open them out of the boxes yesterday just to check and make sure that they were what they were supposed to be and that everything was good with them. But I do want to show you them before I get down to using them. So I'm going to start with this little one. And this didn't come with a dust bag, but I just put it into one last night to throw it in my closet because I don't like to put stuff in there without the dust bag. I share a closet with my husband and <laughs> he can be a little bit messy sometimes so I don't ever put any of my bags away without a dust bag. So I'll just put this down because it's hard to see the item on my dark table. This is a Louis Vuitton MM Agenda in the Epi. And I got this pre-loved. I got it for under $200 which was a good price for an MM. And I'm just going to try to show you a little bit closer. You can see it is pre-loved, but for a piece like an agenda, I sort of use and abuse these and I throw them in and out of bags and it's pointless to buy one that's brand new or in good, really super good condition because I, it's functional for me and I really use it quite a bit. So to buy one that's pristine, um, I always think would be sort of foolish when I can always fix up anything that comes with issues. So... I bought this one and you can see it has the LV. It's very hard to see on camera. Um, it's raining today, so my lighting is not the best. But it has an LV here in the front corner, stamped in, and then it has a button closure. And the reason that I got this for a lower price is because on the back flap down here, um, you can't see it anymore because I've already applied my um, Tarago just black boot polish. There, that's what it looks like. It's a very simple little trick on Epi or on any of these brown leathers. It had a rub mark right along the bottom here. It was all like white. It wasn't peeling, it was just white where it rubbed. Somebody had put something in there that had rubbed. And I just used that Tarago polish. I polished that right off. You cannot even tell it was there anymore. Right. If you can, it's barely noticeable. You don't even feel it when you run your finger over it that there had been a rub there. So I took care of that. <clears throat> That's why I got this so cheap. It's an otherwise perfect condition. It's got the red um, Louis Vuitton heat stamp on in front. This is a made in France. This is from 1996. In August, 96. So it's not... Um, super old but it's also not brand new it's in perfect usable to condition and I do plan to take this down to um, Kylon next time I go out to Louis Vuitton and have an M heat stamped in gold right here so I'm gonna actually get down and start using this right away um, I love it it's exactly as described this is a great little eBay find for not a lot of money so that's my MM agenda in the black epi but the real star of the show for today is this beauty. Um, I got this from Veronica. And as you guys know, she's a trusted seller. And I get a lot of bags from her. Her things are pretty much always like new, great condition, um, great quality. And this has been, I've been buying this bag for a long time. It's been on layaway for a while. And it's something that I didn't have in my collection. So I wanted to add a bag in this material specifically, especially for the fall and winter here in New England, where we have terrible weather and monogram will well, I shouldn't say monogram, Bichetta will certainly be destroyed in a fortnight. So um, I purchased this. And this is the, I'll turn it so that when I open it, you can see the front. It is the Citadine. And it is in black on Priant. And let me just tell you, this bag, I mean, it feels like butter it is so soft and supple i just want to like snuggle it i mean it is 
so luxurious. If you do not have a bag in the Louis Vuitton Empreant line, I highly recommend it. I've been waiting for one in this line, in this material, just because it's so gorgeous. I mean, it just feels rich. Um, it's super soft. It's not a stiff canvas type of bag. It's more malleable and sort of, sort of has a more like hobo feel to it. Um, but it's got the long leather straps and it's sort of a tote-ish. I'd say it's a cross between like a Neverfull and a bucket. Like if a Neverfull and a bucket sort of had a kid, I think it would be this Citadine. Um, because it's, it's not rounded on the bottom like a bucket. It is square, but it sort of has that feel to it. Um, but it is about the same width as, um, a, neck, a little bit smaller than the MM. So give you a closer look to it now, as you can see. So with the Empreant, you have the black leather with the monogram embossed on it. Okay, and then the bottom has four feet, which is great, prevents it from getting stuck up. It's got the golden hardware, which is golden brass, I should say hardware. Everything is stamped. The handles are the same Empreant leather. And then what I like about this is, unlike a Neverfull, this closes. And <laughs> I'm not particular. I mean, I'm a New Yorker, so I would never wear my Neverfull in a city or, I don't know, just growing up in New York. You, you just know better. You don't do that. I mean, some people do that, but I don't do that. Um, to me, I'm just, it's asking for somebody to, you know, <laughs> and um, it, it always makes me nervous. So I would never wear my Neverfull in the city. But this is great because... It has a lock right here. It's like a twist, twist, turn lock. And so you can close it up and you really cannot get, no one's gonna come up behind you and you know dip into your purse without you knowing. And that's always a concern for me um, with the Neverfull. So um, it has the twist, turn lock and then I have it stuffed, obviously, because I have put it away. But the inside is sort of a dark navy and black. And I hope you can see, again, the lighting is awful today. But it has like a, um, the canvas inside has a stripe to it. So it's like a navy canvas with a black stripe, and it just coordinates really well. And in certain lights, this looks more gray, and in certain lights, it looks black. It coordinates so well with this dark blue inside. I'm not worried about any staining, any mess getting in there. And then it has the um, one big oops, zip pocket here. This is where inside the zip is where the extra little like cell phone pocket is. And then on this bag, this is also a made in France. And it is from 2012, 07. To, um, July 2012, sorry. <laughs> yeah, the whole um, day code is 0172. So that's July 2012, made in France. Here's my heat stamp. It's actually um, stamped in the gold foil, which is sort of nice. And then it also comes with this cute little Empreant pochette. Now, this is adorable, and you can just come right out. Okay, so this is almost like having a separate little bag in and of itself. This is so cute. Um, it's a little bit shorter than um, a regular pochette. It's more like the pochette accessoire. And there you go, you can carry that around. You know, separate, it wouldn't carry much, maybe like a little lipstick or some makeup. Um, let's test it. I don't think my phone would fit. It does have its own um, date code inside and it matches and it has also, it's, it's very hard to see it, but it has also its own um, heat stamp in there. But let's see, I have an iPhone 6. So <laughs> it is an iPhone 6. It's just in an Anthony proof case. And if I took it out of the case, it would certainly fit. Um, so it, it could carry um, an iPhone 6. It would definitely not fit a 6 Plus. But it's big enough for maybe an iPhone. And since it has a little pocket in there, it would be good. Um, you could just slide your driver's license, maybe a credit card or two in there. And just go, you know, if you were in a casino or... I always say the casino. We don't go to the casino a lot. We live sort of near one. But 
anytime I see one of these, I'm like, oh, I could take that to the casino when I go once a year. So <laughs> you could do something along those lines with this little guy, or you could obviously just keep it um, clipped in here in the bag. So let me quickly, I'm just gonna restuff it to OCD to not. And because this bag is a less structured bag too, I definitely didn't wanna store it without this bottom part being stuffed because when there's nothing in it, it sort of flops down and I don't want it to start getting wrinkled or anything like that. So until it's actually being used, which it's gonna be used this weekend because well, it's rain. Um, but until I'm actually using it and all my stuff is in it, um, I keep it keep it stuffed. But this is what it looks like on. Forgive me, it's really gross weather and I've been working on customers' bags all day, but this is what it looks like on. So as you can see, it is like a smallish tote. It stays on really nice. It falls at least on me right in the spot where I can hold it here and keep it um, tucked up sort of under my arm, which is if I carry a tote where I like to carry a tote, it's not too big, which I find um, when I carry my Neverfull MM, I would say my Neverfull MM probably comes a little bit more on me, at least out to maybe here in the front, if that makes sense. And this is just a little bit smaller, a little bit more manageable, and it's a little bit taller. So it hits a little bit nicer, at least for me. Um, I Don't get me wrong, I love my MM. But when I tote that around, I feel like I'm a pack horse, and this is a little bit, I think, more manageable. So that's what it looks like on. I think it's really cute. It's gonna look nice. Um, I also don't don't have many black bags, which is a shame because sometimes, um, especially if I'm dressed up a little nicer in the rare event, that I'm dressed up a little bit nicer or that we're going somewhere a little bit less casual, I like to wear black. I wear a lot of black, and I don't have many black bags, and I always feel sort of like monogram doesn't go, and now I will have this baby to bring with me on those occasions. So I was really excited to get this. I'm really excited to use it. As always, um, Veronica did not disappoint, so I'm really glad that um, I ended up sticking with this bag. We, ha I, we went back and forth a couple of times of whether we should get the Empreant or we should switch it out for something else, and I'm really glad um, that we did stick with it because it's obviously it's gorgeous. So there we go. Those are the two items that I had to show for you today. And it goes into my new agenda. <laughs> Um, the two items I had to show for you today, and I have been going crazy trying to get all these customer bags out. I have a big backlog of orders, but they're, they're moving pretty quickly. A lot of them are cleanings, which get done a little bit faster than full on of dyes. But um, I have all of those in progress. There's nothing really new to show you yet for a tutorial that's come in. Everything that I've been working on is things that you've seen me do. So um, rather than unless somebody really wanted me to repeat a specific tutorial, I plan to wait until I have something a little bit different to show you. We'll happily do that when something comes in that um, is new or has a technique that I haven't used on video for you guys. So I will try to get a tutorial out as soon as I have something interesting to show you. I'm still wait waiting on questions for q and I've gotten a lot of Q&A on the last video, except it was all the same question, which was how much did it cost for the um, Manhattan repair. And again, that's something that you need to contact Louis Vuitton about because every store charges different. I could go to the store in Boston and get a different price than if I go to the store by me, which is in Natick. Um, I will tell you that I paid over $700 for the repair, but again, it, that's something that's different no matter what store you go to. So really, if you want an accurate price for getting that kind of bag repaired, having that type of work done, you need to contact Louis Vuitton and they'll give you an accurate price. Whether you go through with the repair or not, they will quote you the price. So that being said, I did um, just want to address that quickly because that seems to be the biggest question I got on that video. Um, and if anybody does have any questions that they'd like me to do for the Q&A, please leave those so that we can get that video done. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.